If the nutritionists and the metabolic sciences were even remotely correct, the multivitamin would have eradicated every disease. Because if you have all the right switches on, everything's running properly, there'd be no reason to get sick. Sickness is a stressor on the body. It's an attack or malfunction. If you have all the correct things, there wouldn't be any diseases like that. But you don't even have to think that far. Just take a look outside. Where are the grass doctors and the squirrel nutritionists? How is anything in nature alive? If humans are the only people who have this concept of nutrition, and we're also the only ones who have to micromanage our nutrient intake. Nutrition, metabolism, thermodynamics, these things exist and they work in your textbook. They don't work out there in the real world or in your body. All you have to realize is that there are molecules and chemicals found in an organism that aren't present in its diet or in its surrounding environment, meaning that life is able to create and transmute chemicals and molecules based off of what it needs, what its requirements are. There are trillions of possible glycoconjugate combinations. These are the carbon chain building blocks that make up all the cells and allow for all the function of every part of your body to, to run, to work. Nothing that you eat is used in the body in the same form that you ate it. So if you eat something with vitamin E, it's not like your body is just gonna put that molecule in your skin or something as it is. This whole food chain is not an exchange of energy, it's an exchange of biomass. It's an exchange of bioavailable molecules. The reason you can't eat a rock is because it's not bioavailable. Now there are some organisms like fungus who can eat rocks and they can actually make things like different minerals and different metals bioavailable and that's how soil was created in the first place some billion or two billion years ago. But the point is food is not about energy transfer, it's about just biomolecules and biomass. The issue with the nutritionists and the health sciences is thinking that they can outperform what has been going on hundreds of trillions of times every single day for billions of years. The energy source of the universe is light, and the best energy carrier is hydrogen. How that energy is going to be used, how it's going to be harnessed, which pathways it's going to go down, how it's going to synthesize these different biomolecules is dependent and triggered by different wavelengths of light. What's the main difference between humans that get sick all the time and everything else in the world that doesn't know about nutrition that doesn't seem to get sick? Not nearly in the same quantity or degree that we do. The most obvious difference is they're outside more, but internally there's less constant threat of different stressors and anxieties and different ways that you feel like everything's collapsing around you. Now when animals do get that anxiety is usually when they start to get sick. It's not only the light outside that supplies with energy, but it's also the light inside that supplies energy, which is your biophotons and phosphates. This is your ability to emit different wavelengths and frequencies of light. Every cell does this in every single organism. These same nutritionists, they don't know anything about biophotons. They've probably never even heard that word. Or if they have, they only understand it as some consequence of metabolism. But you wouldn't have the energy for metabolism if you didn't have light first, if you didn't have something to trigger what kind of synthesis, what kind of pathway, what kind of metabolic process and transmutation is it going to go through? And that's going to start with light. Keep your chin up, keep your head up, keep your chest out, all those kinds of ideas of just, it's, it's your will, and that will is your light, your biophotons. This concept of the placebo effect is how you're using biophotons, is how that light, internal light, is being harnessed. Other than that, people are completely immersed and bathed in blue light and TV, phones, computers, and different kinds of fluorescent lighting, and this is all very bad because light is how you trigger all of these different processes. Overexposure to blue light can do a lot of things, including re-triggering your day cycle, which if you do at night is obviously not good, but it also is triggering apoptosis in certain cells. So you're constantly 
destroying your biomass because it's constantly being triggered to destroy itself. And this is going to cause you to want to eat more because you're destroying cells, you're destroying biomass, so you're going to constantly be eating more, but your whole body is not evenly being affected by blue light. So you're going to start gaining weight in different areas. You're going to have damaged areas, and then you're going to have areas, areas that seem untouched. And you think people are in indoor lighting, in blue light, in fluorescent lighting for 8 to 16 to the entire day, 24 hours a day for decades and decades. And people are going to sit there and tell you that that doesn't do anything, that it's all about nutrition. And you're going to always be sick so long as you listen to these nutritionists and metabolic and health sciences who use this model of thermodynamics which is inadequate and doesn't work on anything outside of a textbook. And you're going to always be sick until you toughen up, until you stop fearing everything, and you also get rid of this blue light stuff. And if you start putting, start filtering out the blue light completely in your phones, TV, computer screens, whatever. And how do you go about recovering from blue light? The simple guidelines of color theory is all you need. If there's too much blue, you need to balance it with green and red. What's green? Things like trees and grass and other kinds of plants and foliage. How do you get red light? The sunset, sunrise, campfires, candles, torches, things like that. Spend more time bathing in the right kind of lights and less time over worrying and micromanaging nutrition, which is something your body knows how to do and something that every organism has been doing trillions and trillions of times over the course of billions of years of evolution. You're not going to do better than that, but you can control the light that enters you and you can control the light inside you. And you're gonna hear these doctors and nutritionists, and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people in comments, and all of these people, their brains are altered by this blue light. They're thinking with that blue light. That is what's powering their nervous system and their thoughts. And that is what their ideas are going to come from and what their ideas are going to support. And that's why they're going to get infuriated or frustrated. That's why they can't see past the blue light. This is kind of just a follow-up on my last video on food not being fuel, but thanks for watching.